he rarely gets the wins. Can you do it here against Wham? Let's find out. Or will he be sent packing to his bath where he will have to hold on to his little creature engine? Let's find out. As we hop into Altai for some Chinese versus Mongols. Man, Wham really is trying to find a way, isn't he? I mean, how many games has he played of Mongols in a row now? I feel like every time we check in on Wham, he's playing Mongols. I think it's actually this account specifically, Astral Abuser. There's some sort of reference to the stars in there. But looking at his games recently, like it looks like there is a lot of deviation. He hasn't been playing a mix. Um, but every time I catch him right now, it's Mongol, Mongol, Mongol. So let's see what he's learned. Let's see what he can teach us, because this is a sieve that a lot of people are still a little bit puzzled by. They're trying to figure out. They're trying to unravel, because it's definitely a sieve that I'd say has changed a lot from what people are used to. Mainly because of the change in meta. I think like the the sieve itself hasn't seen many adaptations. The outpost nerf hurt a little bit, sure. The GUR buff is nice. But ultimately, the big stinger has been that people moved hard away from prolonged feudal a long time ago for the Mongols. Castle rushes became optimal after outpost rushes. Times are changing, though. Longer feudals are winning a lot of games right now. However, this might be the type of game where you could get away with your castle age rush. As Core is playing as the Chinese. And Core, I'm going to beat my, my, my teaching stick because I know he knows the Chinese can be a formidable force in the feudal age. He's seen it. I've seen it. We know it. But I also know Core. And I know that Core likes to farm. He's a very greedy boy. I've seen what he does. I'm hoping we're going to get some aggression. Let's find out, though. Because i got to say, with a generation like this on a map like Altai, when you play the Chinese, anyone who's done it knows exactly what I'm about to say and resonates with it. It's really hard to resist the temptation to boom. Look at the generation. There's barely any wiggle room to get around the backside for a Mongol player. Your stone is the only thing really forward and exposed. You've got a nice choke point to hold your gold. And you can play forth with a Barbican to block the stone. I wouldn't be surprised if Core says this looks like a free TC game to me. I hope he only says it looks like a 2 TC game. But I wouldn't be surprised by the free. What I'm going to be curious to is whether Wham will feel like it's a TC game. If he will see that this, there's a lack of aggression from the Chinese and if he will try for his own greed. Because one thing that a lot of Mongol players have started to do is they've been bridging a second TC into their build early on. But this is important, this detail, is that you go for aggression as well. If you just rush a second TC here, you will do so from behind. But for the stars, it looks like it's going to be a rush up to Feudal. Notice that Wham did not go for an outpost rush, did not go for any sort of early aggression. I am expecting aggression in Feudal there. And on the other side, Court. Just farming up. I'm expecting an Imperial Academy. I wouldn't be surprised by the Barbican, though, because you're up against Mongols, and people do get very easily threatened by outposts. But he understands. Ever since the nerfs, the changes to outposts, down to 750 health. Do you guys want to know the secret counter to outpost rushes now? Get your torches out. We're going to start a bonfire. The problem that outpost rushes have now is that with 750 health instead of 1,000, it sounds like a big nerf, but it sounds of, like not too overwhelming, right? It sounds like you still get away with an outpost rush. However, the problem of trying to outpost rush is that when you're building that structure up, it takes 50% more damage. And I want you to like really kind of think about that bar. Imagine that bar. Like You see this bar going up right now. You see how it's moving. Imagine that you have this bar. It's escalating. It's building at a slower pace, right? Because it takes an extra 10 seconds. On top of that, you have two, you've lost 25% of what your health was. And while it's in that building phase, which is in for longer while having 25% less health, you're taking 50% more torch damage. The speed at which you can counter an outpost play simply by burning it down has been accelerated by, I'd say, about 35 to 40%. That's a pretty big buff overall to countering outpost rushes. If you see an outpost rush, the lesson here is simply torture it with villagers. Because the time it takes is so much less, the idle time that it achieves doesn't feel good for the outpost rusher. Because at the end of the day, they still pay 100 wood, and they're probably going to lose that 100 wood if you pull 10 to 12 villagers. Because it dies so fast. After that kind of assessment, what does that mean long term? Well, that means that actually the 
Chinese have a more comfortable opening. More so in ways than that. Like, like think about the knock-on effects here. It means that Chinese more frequently don't have to go Barbican first. They can go Imperial Academy, which is really good. It means you're getting the double taxation straight away. Also, the other important detail here is remember, they changed Imperial Academy to allow you to build officials now. That is a huge booster to be able to go straight for that. As opposed to if you go the Barbican build, usually you have to sacrifice villager production to get a second Imperial official out. Huge difference there. On top of that, here's another knock-on effect. Chinese, yeah, sure. They got hit by the outpost build speed nerf as well with extra 10 seconds, but they already build faster. So they don't feel the impact as much. On top of that, the Barbican play didn't get a hit at all. Your Barbican build speed is still what it was before. This means that actually the Chinese are very quickly becoming the, quick, uh, the strongest outpost rushing sieve alongside the Rus. By the way, before anyone like tries to count that, say Mongols, but Mongols they, they can build spears early, they can rush out, they they they're going to do it more frequently. That's that's true. Mongols might do it more frequently, but the problem is because of that frequency, like and because of the the lack of variance gameplay, uh, a Mongol player outpost rushing is a more predictable and likely occurrence. Whereas a Chinese player, like you have to actively scout for it because although a barber can play seems very feasible, it's not guaranteed. Right, that's the difference. The Chinese have two or three different openings they can go for. And that can really throw people off. Variance gameplay, you hear me talk about it a lot right now because it really is the difference. If you're a Civ that only has one viable build, you are not going to win very often. You will have to incredibly hard outplay your opponents because you don't have any variance. You don't have this demand on your opponent to scout more, right? So they don't have to waste time getting extra scouts out. They don't have to waste time microing to scout extra stuff because they already know exactly what you're doing. And I can't really emphasize that it's enough. Like the ability to blind counter someone is a big deal because you're able to be more optimal with the, the pivot with the transition by an extra 20, 30, 40 seconds. Anyway, speaking of unexpected things that become expected very fast, especially when Core gets vision like this, it is the secondary TC play we alluded to for the Mongols, as expected, will be placed on the deer stack. So plenty of food coming his way. However, what does this enable Core to do? This enables Core to be a greedy son of a gun. His reaction was, I'm very happy with what I've done. Second TC, Song Dynasty, wouldn't actually have been surprised if Core went for a third one, would have fully been within his right. But actually, Core doesn't want to fall behind in Castle. So what he wants to do instead, he wants to match the Castle timing of Wham, knowing that in the current pacing, with two TC versus two TC as the Chinese with Song, you're actually one TC extra, so your eco will scale better. Now, if he matches the castle timing, he can play for the other eco benefit, which will be these relics. These relics will be a very big deal. And keep in mind that both of these sieves can actually somewhat match each other in terms of the escalation into the religious units. Because on one side, the Mongols can double produce the shamans. On the other side, the Chinese can actually oversee, rather supervise, uh, the, monk, the, the monks production by increasing it by 2.5 times. Meaning that it will only take 12 seconds, is it? I think it's around. Something like 12 seconds. It's very fast now, because remember, they, they buffed the production rates from 45 to 30 seconds. It's incredibly fast. I haven't really seen any Chinese players do it yet, because they're usually too focused on TC booming. But if you're concerned that your opponent really wants those relics, you should be targeting them quickly. And just a little thought here, because Core went for that second, uh, for that Imperial official, spam so quickly, because he went for the Imperial Academy so quickly, he should actually be able to afford to supervise a monastery. Yes. Mark Horseman. Oh, wham, wham, no! Arrow, arrow, arrow! GG. That does not feel good. You were about to complete the tech up. If you got the tech up a little bit quicker, the Khan would have been tanky enough. If you'd used the maneuver arrow, the Khan would have been safe. Instead, he now has two minutes without a Khan at the start of this castle age. Could be very important. Because if they match each other's timings and they both start going to Lancers, you don't actually have a one-up as the Mongols. Luckily for Wham, it looks like Kor is taking a little bit of time here. In fact, Kor is heavy producing into Spears. He's even supervising for it by the looks of it. 
An interesting choice. Yeah, he's going for the full wall in. I'm not sure how we feel about this choice by Core to surrender the relics for free. I was kind of expecting him to rush up, but it seems he's very content with his scaling. I wouldn't be that content, to be honest. Like, you're a 2TC versus 2TC, and your Mongol opponent just got the step read out. So you can talk about this 20% increase in gatherings, but in the gold department, you're going to fall behind. The reason this is a problem is one up that the Mongols have at this stage is if they do have a lot of gold, what can they build? Lances and shamans. Expect the next two minutes to be all about relic hoovering. And Core, because he went for Static Spearman in small quantities, don't think he's going to be able to guard them. Uh, interesting question coming out here around Wham's choice to rush improved forestry. Actually, a really kind of slept on tech, actually. I think it's... I'm trying to remember how much stone it was. I think it was only like 75 or 100 stone. The reason you rush this forestry... And by the way, I can, I can explain why Wham really likes this. Uh, Wham was practicing a little bit of Mongols on Woodwall. Um, we were talking with him about it, and we were watching what he was doing. We were kind of fear crafting alongside him. Like the whole idea is that on Woodwall, you would go for improved forestry because improved forestry allowed you to chop down a tree with one strike, one strike, and it would allow you to rush through Woodwall. And I think that impact that he saw in terms of gathering rates and the the, the save time ch like chipping through has kind of rippled on um, for Wham in the situation. For 75 stone, I think it is actually worth it. Because remember, the resource investment itself is just 25 food and gold. And if you get normal forestry, all it does is lets you chop down trees twice as fast. If you get the improved forestry, it takes a single shot. It is definitely worth it. I know there was a lot of discussion about this in the past, right? People kind of gave some theory crafting on how long it would take to return the value of forestry. But I think the improved forestry being that much better, it probably returns about 33% quicker. So I'd say it takes you maybe 10 to 12 minutes to return. And the other reason why getting the improved forestry is important for Wham is because he wants the second TC. He gets an optimal secondary TC timing because he got the improved forestry. Without this, he probably would have been delayed by an extra 40, 50 seconds, which would have put him very far behind the Chinese. Instead, you can see Core is now only starting to escalate his eco count. It took him a lot longer than it should have. And it's because of the optimal timing for Wham. And yeah, there's some good discussions going on about this. Like, to kind of put it in, in comparison here, let, let's watch what happens when he drops a tree over here. So, are, are we just going to ignore the fights? Because I, I think this is a good educational lesson. There's a little bit of clash going on, but it's just why I'm trying to break in. So, if we move to a new tree in a sec. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Like, that's what, five, five or six? Like, how long was that? I, I wasn't, was someone paying attention to timer? I think it was close to like 10 seconds. Meanwhile, in the land of Wham, watch what happens. Let's see if we catch a villager on a new tree. And... Gone. Instantly. That is a big difference. And I want you guys to really process that each of these trees is only 150 wood. It pays for itself very quick. So yeah, a um, little lesson for Mongol players. Improved forestry is the way. I actually agree with Wham on this. It's a really, really cool play. I don't feel like many players are doing improved forestry either. So this is a really big one up that he has competitively. It's why he looks so competitive with the numbers as well. Like if you look at it, sure, Core's got the lead, but look at the escalation. He's 13 villages ahead with Supervise. He should have the lead. But yet at an early point, Wham was competing time and time again. After all that competition, how are the relics sitting at this point? Was there any monastery play? It looks like Core still hasn't gone for it. I think this is going to be at least four relics for Wham. I believe he's peeling more back right now. In fact, we can probably check on that. God, I hate how you can't cycle through by clicking on it. There's still one relic on the south side. He's got two banks so far. I don't see... Ah, there, there's the other one. I was about to say, where's the other one? He's waiting to bank it here. So he builds another one. You can see the confidence on Wham. He's like, I'm definitely getting enough relics here. And he's right. Not only the relics, but also the lay of the land. Core surrendered past the midpoint, which means that actually Wham gets even more additional income because he can capture two sacred sites for free. Now Wham, nice little break in here. Wraps around and bad news for Core. A few archers here are going to counter him out. 
Chuge Nu quick to react to this. The Lancers are standing their ground, but instead they turn around on the Chuge Nu. Now the attack speed arrow coming out. Wham, just trying to snipe out anything and everything he can. It's a reasonable trade because he gets so many Lancers out at the end of the fight. Some idle time achieved as well, and this wraparound might even snipe out a Spring for free. A core, I don't know what you're doing there. Luckily, it looks like the peel off under the villager will save the Spring Old. In fact, the villagers. Oh, God. How many are going to die here? It looks like there's enough spear to bring him down. Khan is going to die. Good fight coming out from Core. Limited damage to his eco. Wham well, getting a little bit too frisky, maybe not paying attention. Didn't snipe that Spring straight away. So, overall, good trade. Off the back of this, though, Wham was able to secure both sacred sites and go up to four relics. Soon to be five. That's going to be a big booster for him. Long term, that is definitely going to hurt Core. For the time being, he is somewhat content. And Eco is kind of reaching an apex point soon where he can start pushing out. In fact, Core, what I'm expecting now, he's gone hard into the bog standard spears. He should be backing this up with Nesta Bees. He has got the Chuge Nu, which is also a solid option. But Nesta Bees is definitely very feasible here, especially if you start seeing the crossbow amassment, which is what we're seeing. Wham also going for the Spring Wars, benefit of the Mongols, as you don't need those siege workshops, just build them in the field. Someone's trying to tell me that single apostrophe is the way you cycle. Oh, yeah. Wait, why? Why am I only cycling three units? Huh. Not sure what that's about. Just the game reminding me that I'm only... Uh, someone do the maths. I could only cycle six units, got 130. <laughs> I am... Wow. That's actually... It's quite the spit in the face. I am not even uh, a 20th skilled as Wham. That's fair. I'll take that. Bit mean, but true. Wow, I'm looking very content for this to turn to a bit of a stalemate right now. For good reason. The sacred sites, the relics, is definitely escalating. The step readout now shifting across to the western flank to make sure he's got infinite gold. Infinite gold gasm ahead of him. And also the patch is now setting up as he switches over to condensed eco. Some people are losing their crap about the girl placement. I was actually kind of okay with it. The bigger deal is the yam not being there. In fact, the deer stone, I don't... I don't know why this, uh, this happens so often. It feels like people forget about deer stone. Remember, once you have an outpost up, it serves the same functionality. Move the deer stone where you don't have optimal movement speed. He doesn't have it over here. He doesn't have it over here. At least getting it there now, the outpost. But even if you move it down this area on your deer and your wood line, it would be the optimal choice. Meanwhile, center mass starting to build up. Wham. Has surpassed cause numbers. And is now moving into the outpost. I like this. It's a staging ground. It'll be a switch over into the traction trebuchets and a slow siege in. Trying to turn the screws on core. It could be pretty effective because the mistake the core's maybe made here is still no nest of bees. So no quick way of blitzing through the front line. He can be held back. And in fact, it looks like core's plan is to go for a keep drop. This could be a little bit dangerous. Especially that positioning. That's a little bit risky. Lancers are going to peel back as vision's given over. Spring building up behind this. And Wham gets the bad news. There's no siege to deal with. However, the amount of archers he's got up against his spears will feel good. Build up's going to begin. A pushback. Good maneuver by Core, but it's going to cause him to sacrifice a lot of troops. Lance is now wrapping around under the villages. No textiles as a sin from Core. Quick reaction out of spears, though. Ah, Wham will stand his ground. Looks like the keep is going to go up. Army is definitely going to be sacrificed, though. The Spring will trade out is going to be in favor of Wham as he clearly has a numerical advantage. It's going to be a pushback. Core cannot hang around in the area. Keep goes up, but villagers will go back, realizing that he needs to get more troops up here, more defenses before he tries to take these resources. But at least he has stopped Wham from getting control of the area and taking them himself. Wham, after what he just saw, this might be the moment for Maganel play. He's seeing a lot of Chugenu coming out, less spears. This validates a switch into Clump Siege. In fact, Wham right now might be targeting something else. He's saving up a lot of surplus. I think he's considering Imperial Age here. And I think the reason he wants it is because of Core's composition. Core's got only Spears and Juganu, and he's already proven that he can somewhat hold him back. The goal here in Imperial Age is that Core doesn't actually have a quick breach, so he couldn't punish you entirely for going in. 
I do think it's a bit game free to do before pop cap though. So I prefer that Wham just keeps saving up, but also bolstering military. I love the plan to trebuchets now. Spear moving out in the meantime. Lancers cannot engage. Archers are now arriving though. Yam is going to run out. This way you need to be a little bit careful because the Chuge Nu can gap close you. However, it looks like he's willing to take the fight. A bad fight coming out for Core right now. Start a step back. The bait in from those Lancers. The attack speed arrow coming through. He needs to retreat away from this. Core getting completely and utterly routed away. He needs to retreat. Numbers are falling fast behind this. Trebs weren't finished off. That's the good news here for Core. Cool. The reason that's good news is he's got all this stone, but he wants to get another keep up. He wants to try and play one on the south side of the sacred site so he can get close to the base. If he's able to do that, then Core can begin to siege in. As it stands, that does seem like a stretch of the imagination to be able to achieve. Stone reserves also running out. Has got two at home. He wants to make sure he doesn't waste them though. Wow. Look how quickly these trebuchets are going up. We are now getting the Maganels. This is where we need the pivot. Cool. Only two Springles is putting him miles behind, and he's not mass producing. Like, notice that he's not pushing any right now. He is making a switch into Horsemen. I like this. It can be a little bit dangerous when you're up against a few Lancers like this, though. My concern is these Trebs are now online. No repairs coming out. Wham did reach up Imperial in the end. We talked about him not being too greedy, and credit to him, he wasn't. He's practically pop capped at this stage, and he took a good fight against Core. That's the critical detail. If it wasn't for that throwaway by Core, I don't think Wham would have went Imperial. But now that he's here, Core's in trouble. Look at Core's resources. Look at what he's invested in. He didn't save for it. This investment into Horseman is basically the cost of his tech up. And now he has to take a fight, a fight that's going to be difficult. Trev count is high, Siege count is high. The diving comes out, the Horseman's gonna catch him off guard. Lancers need to react to this. There's the peel off. Archers will show their face. Khan has respawned now. Attack speed arrow could come out. If Wham notices this, it could completely turn the fight around. In fact, it's already turned around. The wasted time going after the traction trebuchets has cost him to lose the Horseman. Chugi knew gonna be thrown away. Wham now with the tech up and also the military lead. This is a problem. To his credit, Core did get rid of the trebuchets, which means he has delayed the siege. To his discredit, it's a Chinese-Mongol matchup, and you're an entire age behind. Not good. And still two track vision trebuchets remain, enough to take down the keep. Shout out to Ayagaz for the raid coming through. Buddy, while you're here, we've been getting everyone to coach Core. You got any advice for him on this build? I know you just came in. Feel free to say whatever you want. Puppy Paul has set a very interesting standard for coaching. I think right now, just telling Core to get gooder is acceptable. As Wham is definitely educating him here. And Core, after the fullback, looking for that tech up now. Military was fully sacrificed though, so this is not going to be a free tech up. Something's going to have to be sacrificed here. And he's already sacrificed his arms. Might have to be the legs as well. Siege in on the way. Trebs to open it up. Won't take long on a pass a gate. More troops building up behind this as well as the infrastructure. Moving out into the midpoint when he needed it most. The timing could not be better for Wham as he continues to exploit this wood in mass. And I mean, I just got to give credit to it. You know, we, we talked about the fact that the like, Mongols don't have many upsides. It's all about gold. That's what they can trickle upwards. But I've got to give him credit here. This improved forestry build shows you another way in which the Mongols can get a little bit of an eco lead. It seems really nitpicky, but we saw the difference it makes chopping these trees straight away. And we've seen the difference it's made in wood throughout the game. Wham is trying real hard to bring mass siege back into the meta for Mongols, and this might be step one. As the mass siege starts to breach into the base, cool. At least completes his tech up. But now he needs to wait. This is the problem. Notice the wait. 30 seconds to a minute on some of these researchers to come through. In the meantime, look at what Wham is going to do. Ford Outpost being set up. Enough stone to start pumping them full of cannons. And alongside that, the chemistry to increase the damage further. Hand cannoneers are being prepped. This is going to be dangerous for Core. In the meantime, Core will spot Wham out being a little bit greedy here. Cannon emplacement comes in on the wrong outpost, though. 
That's going to be frustrating. Wham will have to run away. No way he can hang in the area. However, in the center, he's gaining ground. And also, Lancers are coming to react to this. It's only Horseman. This is the fight that Core is going to lose unless he gets to keep up fast. And right now, yeah, dog, these villages are kind of late. He might be in luck. The Yam, however, might also allow Wham to peel past the Horseman instantly. I think he's likely to just take the fight straight away, though. Meanwhile, center. Crawling continues. Keeps a standing for the moment, but keep in mind that Core has no stone to play with in the spring will count. This escalation is the problem, Core. If anything, he needs an extra bit of wood and a supervising over a siege workshop. That'd be two things too many right now for him. Wraparound is coming in from the Horseman, but buddy, I've got bad news. Battle of Nagashino. Nobunaga versus Cavalry. Do you know how this one works out? You're about to find out. Horseman being eradicated and only sniping a single spring for their trouble. Wham, surely feeling confident right now. Core at least insta replaces the army, but he does so with Chuge Nu. Up against Hankan Nis, not a bad proposition, but up against Lancers, that's a big no-no. You can see he got the spirit waste, he's got the attack speed buffer as well as the health, but it matters little. The amount of damage coming out from each hand kind of near quickly dispatches him. Appeal back in the meantime as the horsemen try to wrap around. Outposts now getting upgraded with the cannons. It's now or never for core. A reaction coming in, a backstab is going to be ineffective. Trebuchet is now on the front line though, but the damage coming out. Heavy damage rendered here. Look at these trebuchets, they turn around to keep instead. Chuge Nu is somewhat stabilizing, but keeps going to go down. More of the base disappearing for Core as Wham is going to bring around the second wave of Lancers. That'll be a cleanup in Isle Core. Not much he can do to finish off the last of the Trebs here. The crawling will continue, and it is beginning to look cruel for Core. Just a few Lancers, just the damage they do. I mean, this Chuge Nu, they're doing nothing. The damage is being reduced to one on a unit that has 270 HP. And it's going to get worse because biology hasn't even come into the play yet. That's next up. And you can see the reaction here. Core trying to get into the hand cannon ears, but possibly too little too late. Such a big lead already for Wham, and the escalation continues. Every time he makes his side steps into the horseman, into the hand cannon ears, it's him stepping further away from Siege. And it means that Wham is stepping ever closer to his primary TC with more and more outposts getting these cannon emplacements. Cool. He's got plenty of gold, but gold really isn't the pro It's not the problem here. It's the composition. You see now the reactionary outpost coming out, but my friend, one cannon emplacement is going to kill your ass on this gold line. And he hasn't got enough troops to peel off and deal with it either. Once that gold is gone, this is where Core will flatline. If he can not stop this outpost before the cannon's in, he is out. Now Trebs targeting down the Barbican. Static defenses are running out. I mean, cool. The issue I see here is he's fighting a losing fight in his own base constantly. The only way he can recover this is if he finds a way of weaving into the eco of Wham. But because of the way that Wham's played the map and condensed himself of outposts all around the center, without Siege, he doesn't even get flanking opportunities. It's a really tough element of Altai. But I've got to give so much credit to Wham, but the way he's using Mongols in a late game situation against the Chinese like this, the way he's out ecoing him is really impressive. Now, something that is not going to look impressive is his wraparound. Horseman coming in and doing very little. The cannon emplacements are going to be the MVPs here. Outpost nerf, but cannons clearly not nerfed enough. Then Maganel shots in. All the plus signs, but it's a big negative for Core. Bye bye, Army. Bye bye, Core. Whew. Now I know why he named himself Core. Because when we see plays like that, we go, Core. Oh, that looked painful. Cool. I'll give him credit. He's not waving the white flag. But it's hard to see what he's holding on for. Right now, Core is looking like that person who's been in an unhappy relationship for 12 years. Has never been satisfied. 
has always had this relationship be take, 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 never give. Yet he still hangs around. He still believes that one day it could be 50-50 or maybe he can get the better side of the relationship. Poor buddy. I don't see it. The hand cannoneers are unanswered. The outpost crawl is unanswered. Core's base has fallen silent. It's not even Fire Lancers, it's just Elite Horsemen. This outpost crawl is looking cruel. Core is looking about done. And we talked about that gold line. We didn't get to see it. But villagers go bye bye. One outpost and a cannon is all it took. And no gold anymore for Core. Look at the income, it's zero. Food and wood. Now, according to Poppy Paul's coaching, this is all Core needs to win the game. And Poppy Paul, he's a qualified World Lore player. So if I follow the coaching advice, with food and wood, if Core cannot win this game, he just needs to play better. You have to play a lot better though. From this position anyway. The crawl ins on I'm sorry, I have to make the memes around the coaching. It was brilliant coaching. <laughs> oh. Not much for Core to laugh about anymore, though. This just looks vile. His eco is exposed. He's not defending it. Oh, God. It's the Core special. Oh, Core. Cool. It's like listening to the line from Yu Gi Oh! Where there is a way, there is hope. Core has reached that point, the only way, the only hope is unlimited horsemen. And how will he do this? With this, the Imperial Palace is in the corner. How will he not do this is the funner question. He has no gold. He has no fire lancers. Fire lancers could do this. I don't think horsemen can, especially when Wham does this. He moved the deer stone away. He moved the step read out to the midpoint. This strategy from Core can potentially work as a Chinese with a quadruple stack drop of landmarks. But Wham has spread out across the map. He is butter on the bread right now. And he is about to earn the bread. He's pulled the villages. Marine Lords read the wild baboon trap card. I mean, it's kind of fitting because Core is about to go ape crap crazy when this doesn't work. When he discovers that the landmarks aren't all in one place, he's not going to be happy with this. What the hell is this? <laughs> the panic set again. Core's like, just in case he comes to my landmark. Uh, we'll, we'll, we've highlighted that. I think that's going to come into the picture in a sec. Spirit weighs down. North side. Wham knows he's probably not there, so he needs to check the west side. Imperial Academy is soon to fall. It's do or die time. Core knows it. Here we go. 102 horsemen leave home. None will come home. You think that's a full wall? <gasps> oh, you might be right. I'm not do I'm not convinced. One's in chat if you're convinced this is walled. Two in chat if you're not convinced that this is walled. This does not look walled. <laughs> it looks like a tiny shrubbery path. I hope I'm wrong. So we can at least see the horseman fail. Here we go. Riders are row here. Um. Well, I don't think they're going to be able to row, row, row the way to a victory here. Push in. Cannon upgrades coming through late from Wham. But it doesn't matter. Look what he does. Step read out instantly into the Chinese base. <laughs> this just doesn't do anything. Not as much Riders of Rohan as Riders of Ro Khan. Riders of Ro cannot do anything here. It's literally just one landmark. <laughs> Core's like, okay. 
A kink in the plan. Split up, boys. Find the landmarks. Find the landmarks. Why is Stupor in the southern corner? Meanwhile, all three landmarks in the center from <laughs> He's like, if you want them, you're going to have to come back to the cannons. Speaking of cannons, they're online. Oh my god, he juked him again! Cause like, he must be in my base. Nope! End it. End it. End it. You're doing my boy dirty. Dude, Wham is styling on core right now. I always wondered what the RTS equivalent of teabagging was. We thought it was Siege Towers, but I think it's this. Oh, you can tell that Core did not grow up on Blue's Clues because he has got no clue where these landmarks are at all. <laughs> now, now we'll get our answers. We had a mixture of ones and twos. Believers and non-believers. Wham is about to answer our question. Is there access? Core now marching in. He's not going to answer our question. Curses! But Core, that's going to be GG. He pinches one landmark, but but Core, what about this one? What, what about? I guess we're just going to say like one's a win. It's not. GG gets cool. It's open. It's open. We were right. Okay, I I I feel bad actually. After the loss, we didn't need to prove Core there wrong there as well. God damn, wham. Why'd you have to do him like that?